It's week three. That means that we're already a third of the way through the class, and in six short days, we're going to be halfway through the class. Freaky, huh? Everybody. For the week three video, the major thing you turned in last week is the profile essay, and it's the first of the major assignments, so most of this video is going to be my thoughts on what I saw after I graded your profile essay submissions. The first thing I want you to know is you need to be calm through this process. People tend to get emotionally invested in the papers they write, so sometimes seeing a grade that doesn't quite look like what they expected uh, can be a little bit shocking, and everyone generally tends to expect A's. I recommend taking some time before you delve into the comments. Make sure you're in the right frame of mind. Reread the assignment sheet. Make sure that you know exactly what the requirements were before you go in and looking at your grades. The second thing I want you to remember is when I grade papers, I don't really think about the people writing it. This isn't about you. It's not a personal attack or anything. I'm just looking at the quality of the writing as I see it. And if it's not as high as you want it to be, don't panic. This is part about the whole keeping calm thing, because we have a revision policy in this class. You can always fix stuff. You can always make stuff better. We have up until week five, I believe it's the end of week five, it's in the syllabus, to let you know when you can work on getting the, your paper ready. Full details on how to fix your paper and the revision procedures are in the major assignment sheet, so please look at that. And when you do calm down, think about the revision plan, reread the assignment sheet, look at my comments, try to figure out why exactly I said those. You need to get out of your own head as a writer and start to think about writing in terms of the audience. And whenever you get comments, figure out why people brought the opinion that they did. I had a student one time who came to me confused after a peer review session because everyone was telling him their paper was too detailed. And I had said in class that you can't go into too much detail. Detail is good. She's like, but everyone says I'm doing too much detail. So we looked at the comments and it wasn't that she was using too much detail, it's that she wasn't contextualizing anything in terms of her argument. Sometimes if the comment itself doesn't specifically look clear to you, think about it and try to figure out what standards were brought, why a reader's approach is different than your possible approach. Now, in terms of what I do when I look at these papers, there are some big primary important things that, you, that I look for. You have to follow the directions. And it's not just follow the directions and everything will be perfect and wonderful. You have to get the spirit of the assignment and really figure out what you are supposed to do and do it to the best of your ability. I'm always shocked at the amount of people who look like they didn't glance at the assignment sheet. The profile essay is a profile of a specific place or a specific event that recurs, you know, like a festival, like a um, meeting or something like that, and a specific event that occurs at a specific time. I've seen actor biographies. I've seen anecdotes of my experience at the zoo or something to that effect. It, they might be fine papers and they might be legitimate experiences, but it's not what the assignment is. So you have to make sure you're doing what the assignment requests. The second thing, and you've probably heard me say this in a few videos already, these are ultimately arguments. Yes, it's a profile paper, but you're supposed to focus on what is the thing that somebody needs to know about this and why do they need to know it? An argument is about stating a position within a debate. 
if everybody thinks the same thing, if you're just telling me something that everybody would know, you're not really doing an argument. If you repeat someone else's view, you're making their argument. You're not making your own argument. If there's no other way anyone can take something other than your way, that's not really an argument either. I go into this in detail in another video for this class, but just know this. If it reads like, I'm just going to tell you about this thing, that's going to be a problem because academic writing is entirely about arguing that your position is correct. It's about finding a position in a debate that you can support using evidence. And that's the biggest thing that is going to guide the grades you get on these papers. The other thing I have to point out is I do look to see if papers are the proper length. If a paper is short, you're not doing as much work as if you're doing a paper to the expected amount. If I ask for a five-page paper and you turn it a three-page paper, well, guess what? You've only really done 60% of the assignment. So it's going to reflect that in your grade. The syllabus says you're going to lose at least 10% points. It might be more. If you give me something that's half length, the highest grade you'd be able to get would be a 50. I want you to take the length requirements seriously because it needs to be a measure of the depth you put in. If I'm asking for a five-page paper, it's because I need an argument of a certain scope and scale. And if you give me less than that, it's going to affect your grade. There are a few other minor things that pop up that we need to talk about right now, too. First, writing is supposed to be formal. Don't write this like you're writing your buddy who you see every so often. Don't write this as you're writing to your diary. Academic writing is formal writing between professionals. It, when I write an, an academic paper, it's published in a journal that other professionals are going to read. So I'm not going to say, hey, everybody, let me tell you about this fun thing I did. It's bitching or something like that. No, formal writing, keeping a formal tone, keeping a formal approach. Another thing is proper narrative voice. Academic writing really should be third person narrative voice unless there's a good reason to do it some other way. If you go into first person, I or we, me as a reader, I'm going to think that this is about the person who's writing rather than the subject they're supposed to be writing on. And the reader at some level is going to be paying more attention to the author's own personal experiences or points of view rather than the claim plus evidence. Second person is when you address the reader directly with the word you. If an author is directly addressing me, then my thought process is going to be, wait a minute, is that right? Do I think and feel that way? And if I'm paying attention to my own thoughts on an issue, I'm not paying attention to the actual argument that's being made. I'm not saying you never go into first person or second person. If there's a good reason to do so, do it. But primarily, third person narrative voice. And it's something I tend to have to say a decent amount. Specificity is something that will have an impact on the grade. If you're not specific enough, if you're doing a big, broad, general thing rather than a specific thing, if you're making a broad claim instead of a specific claim, if you're describing uh, a big trend instead of getting into a specific, that's not really good because readers can grasp specific things a lot more easily than they can big in general. If I see a specific subject of analysis, my mind can start to focus on how the argument fits this. If I see a big, broad, general one, I'm going to have a hard time because I'm going to have to try to figure out those specificities myself. Specific things can stick into the reader's mind. General, no. If we're writing something about vehicles, it's going to be a long, wide-ranging babble-a-thon, basically, more than an argument. If I pick a specific vehicle, and let's face it, there really is nothing like this one. 
If I pick a specific vehicle as my subject, I can make specific claims about it. I can analyze it using specific evidence about the specific vehicle. I can look for specific sources a lot easier. We go into this in, another, in more depth in another video, but I swear it's true. Specific will not only be better for the readers, it's going to be better for you as a writer because it gives you a lot more detail to work with because you can get into the specificity at work. Writing has to be specific. Now, there are other things that pop up on the papers, but these are the big ones that are common in a lot of people's papers. So they're the ones I want to focus on. Keep in mind, we have a revision policy. You can fix your paper. The procedure is mapped out in the major assignment sheet. Basically, we're going to set up a meeting. You're going to give me some idea that you understand the comments and that you have an idea of what you're going to fix. I'll be there to answer questions. Then, after our meeting, fix what you need to fix and resubmit it via the original submission link. And I'll grade it again. And you'll get the better grade. And if you're still not happy with it, you can revise it again as long as you follow the same procedure. One other thing I need to talk about is please remember that we're on an accelerated time space here. We're covering a 15 week semester in six weeks. We're moving faster than double speed. So it's a very good idea to make sure you're doing all of the work. In this last week, there was a peer review session for Wednesday work. We have 17 students in this class. Five people didn't do a thing for it. Five people didn't even turn on their profiles. And there's a few assignments that have six people that didn't do it. By in general, I'm happy to take late work. I hope you talk to me first, but I'd rather have you pass the class and not pass the class. So I want to give you the chances, but we're up against the time frame. One, you don't have forever to fix stuff because it's a short, short semester. The other thing is there's certain things like the peer review session, the five people who didn't do that. I can't really allow makeup work on that or late work on a peer review session because there's no point in reviewing a paper of somebody that's already turned in. So please make sure that you're getting all of the work in. If you have problems, please, by all means, talk to me first. So work on getting your profile right if you're not happy with the grade you got and make sure you get everything for this week done. I don't have anything else specific to cover, but if you have questions, hit me up via Remind. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if it's something that's vitally important for everybody to know, I will either send out an announcement or do another video. Who knows? Um, hope you have a good week three. Let's get jumping on the technology essay because that'll be due soon. I have faith in you, though. If you find... If you discover that you want to do a revision on the profile essay, contact me if you remind. Let me know when we can have a time where we can do a digital meeting so we can, uh, we can talk over the procedure. And I think that's about it. So, see you next week. Bye.